Good morning, everybody. Bart Winkler Show. I am honored that you have selected to press play on this uh, platform, platform, wherever it is, audio, video, or some other way I'm not quite aware of yet. Ryan Horvath is here as he is. It is our picks episode. We will talk uh, some Packers. Have to. Dude, so this fucking bullshit. It's like, apologies to Dan Shaney's kids who, they like, Dan Shaney on the YouTube insurance or the YouTube stream, he sells insurance. Um, his kids listen to him in the car and they always try to see how long it is before I swear. And so I'm conscious of that. I try to at least do like a good 10 minutes without a swear, but LaFleur's got me all tilted. And LaFleur, like, good coach, whatever, fine. I, you know, I don't like that. If you're going to bitch about the way that Joe Barry's calling a defense, Get rid of him. Yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. Joe this Barry. Is an arranged marriage. You hired him. Dude, What's the deal? That was, uh, all right. So, really quick on that game. You know what sucked about that game is, you know, is that, that reminds Tommy me. Tommy DeVito is an Italian stereotype, and everyone thinks it's fun now to make fun of Italians like me. Yeah. Yeah. That. But, man, that one pissed me off because, oh, I mean, you know, Jordan Love played really shaky in the first half, which, you know, I didn't really – I mean, so I bet the Giants in that game. Uh, they were seven-point dogs, and then I bet them again at six just because I thought that was a really bad spot for the Packers. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, overreacting to that loss. They just – they're one of the youngest teams, the youngest team in the league. And they had way too many injuries going into that game, playing on a short week. No Jair again. No Christian Watson, who they desperately need out there, obviously, because uh, they have the youngest wide receiver room. And then, uh, you know, no Aaron Jones. And you had the Giants were coming off the bye. So they had 14 days to prepare for that game. The Packers were playing on short rest. So, yeah, it's DeVito. But, man, what was frustrating was how they lost because uh, I thought – I thought Jordan Love played really, really, really good in the second half, and that's awesome because he's a young quarterback on the road, prime time game, and he still finishes. You know, the numbers look decent, 25 for 39, 218 yards. Had a bad interception, but also had a touchdown pass, a big one that should have won the game, and was under pressure, took two sacks in that game. And I was a little surprised just because the week before that against a pretty good Kansas city defense, they blitzed Jordan love 16 times and they only got home three times. Like he picked apart the Kansas city blitz and you know what wink does wink Martindale for the giants is he just blitzes and then plays a bunch of zone coverage. So I thought Jordan love was going to pick apart that defense all night long. Like after that first drive, I was a little bit worried. I was like, ah, I'm going to lose a bunch of money on the giants. Should have just bet the Packers. I think the Packers are going to win, but man, like, now we're pricing this team as touchdown favorites. They were just seven-point underdogs the week before. The market doesn't know what to do. They're still young, and they're beat up right now, and this other team's rested. But I didn't think they were going to lose outright like that. Like, So Jordan Love battles back, and that was awesome to see. You know what I mean? Like, I wish he would have got the ball back. I think he would have won that game. And that's like that's almost like the opposite sometimes. Like, Rodgers would be awesome, awesome, awesome quarters, like one through three, and then like, some team would go on this long ass 10 minute drive against us to beat us. And he'd get the ball back with like 30 seconds. And we'd be like, Oh, yeah. he can't win the big one. But dude, love gets the ball and he's got the clutch gene maybe, you know? Um, so I saw people on social media and it was mainly like bears fans, but they were like, if, if you just like watch that game and you throw that on Jordan love, like you didn't really watch that game. Bears That's fans, sloppy. bears fans are they're They're having a hard time because yeah. Jordan love is the next guy here. Uh, that game that you saw on Monday night, it was a little bit of everything. Every game that he's had this year, some good, some bad, you saw all of it in that game. But he got better as the game went on, yeah. put him in a position to win. Bears fans are making it about like – Bears fans feel like – the mentality of a Bears fan is they drafted Justin Fields one and we drafted Jordan Love two. And they need to constantly, in the same draft, which they didn't, and it wasn't. But they need to constantly compare Fields to Love. I mean, you can compare them as young quarterbacks, but they always treat it as an either-or. It's like, you have yeah. your guy, we have ours. I, I mean, Justin Fields the other night, I saw Justin Fields play. I go, 
oh, he looked pretty good. And yeah. Bears fans see Jordan Love, and they have a whole dissertation about their feelings. That, like, just worry about your shit, man. Leave us alone. Right. And that's the thing. Like, I like Justin Fields. I don't think he's going to be the Bears' starting quarterback. I just don't know how you draft number one and you don't take Caleb Williams. You know what I mean? But I like Fields, so I kind of, like, cheer for him. Um, I want to see him somewhere else, like Atlanta, with all that speed. But that's what I just – I didn't – that game had nothing to do with Jordan Love. Uh, but it did remind me a little bit of like just every Packers game my entire life, whether it's far. And I, that's what I texted you. I was like, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. This is always going to be the same organization. It's going to be, you know, it, whether it's Dom Capers, Mike Patton, or Joe Barry, we're going to blame the coordinator. You know, and and Goot's done a lot of good in this draft. You know, we'll wait and see with Van Ness. I, you know, Jaden Reed is a great player. We don't need to like run 18 fucking end arounds though. Like one or two will suffice. The hell was LaFleur doing in that game? I get you don't have Christian Watson, but yeah, I, I still like LaFleur, but that was kind of questionable. Some of the play calling stuff. Uh, and they should have just ran AJ Dillon more. Patrick Taylor needs to learn when to get out of bounds, you know, and, and his football IQ needs to improve, but he's running the ball pretty well. So should have stuck with him. He was averaging like, I believe seven yards per carry. I thought that they neglected, neglected. They, they abandoned the run a little bit too soon in that game. That'd be my only knock on LaFleur. But who fucked that entire game up? And it's the same story every year. Yeah, the defense. And Joe Barry's got to go. What was baffling to me is he plays this soft bullshit zone coverage all game long. And then after LaFleur's press conference, LaFleur says that they played man. And I'm watching, man. And Keyshawn Nixon was brutal. Like, not only on special teams, but also in coverage. And I yeah. I guess I've never – like, I watched the all I, – I watched the all 22. But I had to just because um, – <laughs> I, I only say that because, like, sometimes I have to with this team because I really don't know what the fuck Joe Barry is doing, and it's the best view you could get. And they claimed that they were playing man, I, but they were like, why was Keyshawn Nixon, like, eight yards off the ball? I don't know, man. It was baffling to me. So Joe Barry does suck. Or Gudikin sucks because these are all his guys. And I don't know. Like, this draft class is pretty good. and We'll see, if, you know, about a lot of his guys. So uh, the other thing, special teams, every fucking year, man, the San Francisco game, you win that game 10 times out of 10 if you don't get a fucking punt and a field goal block. I'm sorry for swearing, but it's the same story every year. Like the Seattle game, we're 13 seconds away from heading to the Super Bowl, and there's Brandon Bostick, and we fire the coordinator. But it's like, you know, you pay the special teams coordinator all this money, you get him his kicker, this and that, and the special teams – is a freaking disaster. Every single year it costs this team, doesn't matter who the quarterback is, who the coach is, like three to four games. Doesn't matter if it's Ty Montgomery, Brandon Bostick. Like why? It's not like this for everybody. It's like this for BS teams like the Bears, the Lions, the Vikings. It shouldn't be like this for a team like Green Bay, though. Is it coaching? Is it the coordinators? Is it the players? Like do we need better special teams players? I mean, there's a reason those guys are playing special teams. It's it's just frustrating. Well, how they the, that, that's why we complain about two quarterbacks with two Super Bowls is because you had Brett Favre and his three MVPs in a row. You had Aaron Rodgers and his four MVPs scattered throughout his career. And the two years that the Packers won the Super Bowl, they needed either – I mean, the 96 defense was incredible, and the 2010 defense came yeah. to play. And – um you know, a lot of the 96 was special teams, too, with Desmond Howard. Like they might not win that Super Bowl without special teams. And they're not going to win the Super Bowl against the Steelers without that big turnover on defense. So you need those. Other, it's like, yeah, we have we figured out the one thing that nobody can figure out. Quarterback consistency. But we can't figure out anything else. So I don't know. You get a couple Super Bowls. That's great. But really quick. So on the it, dude. Buccaneers. And you know, you know, like, and you just you can't let Tommy DeVito look like Vanilla Vic out there, man. That's that's the thing. Like, it's a fun story, but Tommy DeVito can't have seventy-one rushing yards against you. And I, the reason I think it might be like scheme, and it might even be like maybe it is the coordinators and stuff, because I think like the Vikings are a really good example. Is even even the Chargers, like Brandon Staley was supposed to go to the Chargers to fix the defense, and every year the defense gets worse. Like he needs to be fired. Um, 
And then, like, you know, they, they get J.C. Jackson. They pay him all that money. He sucks. The next year he goes back to New England. Now he's playing like an all-pro corner. Look at the Vikings. The Vikings, you know, they didn't really make a whole bunch of moves this offseason. And last year they were outside the top 25 in pass defense. They allowed fucking Daniel Jones to throw for 300 yards twice, and they're, they're not even in the same division. And, uh, you know, they, they were brutal. And this year they're a top 10 defense because they hired Brian Flores. Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe Matt LaFleur needs, maybe, you know, Robert Sala gets shit canned and he's not a head coach, but he's a great oh, defensive God. coordinator. I know, but maybe, maybe like Bill Belichick, like uh, he would never do that. He's a, he's going to remain a head coach or he's going to go to the booth, I think. But, you know, like the, when the Rams made the run, McVay hired Wade Phillips. Maybe you just need like, you know, Vic Fangio right now is in Miami. These old cranky assholes. But Joe Barry ain't it. Um, Rich, whatever the fuck his name is, ain't it? And, you know, some of these guys ain't it. But I don't know. I, I do worry it's the scheme because all these guys are Goot's guys or Goot does suck because, you know, and I, and I get there was a bunch of injuries and Koi wasn't out there and Jair wasn't out there. But it sucks because you weren't even you, we weren't even in the hunt. We were no longer in the hunt. We were in the wild card. And it's like, OK, I feel good about this game, not covering seven points, but winning this game outright against Danny DeVito and the Giants. Because coming up, I think we're going to lose one or both of those divisional games. Bears scare me right now. You know, Bears week one, we liked them. Uh, you know, the Packers, because we were like, oh, the Bears are overhyped. Now the Bears are actually a decent football team. They have a top 10 run defense out of nowhere. Secondary's playing better. Fields is playing for his career, not his job in Chicago, just to go elsewhere and be a starter. And Eberfuck has been a little bit better as well. So that one scares me, dude. I think we lose to the Bears. So that's why you had to have the game against the Giants. I was all like, oh, I want a top five pick. Give me either, like, if Jordan Love ain't the guy, give me Caleb Williams or Drake May or Jaden Daniels, who I, my hot take, I might rather have Jaden Daniels. He might be Lamar Jackson, but more accurate. You just got to put some muscle on him or he may get killed out there. Or, or Marvin Harrison, because that's the other thing, really quick, on Jordan Love, dude. He's throwing, like, these, okay, the wide receivers have been fine. They've been fun, right? But he's throwing to guys, I'd be bitching if this was Aaron Rodgers. He's throwing to Wicks and Dobbs. Like, this is like Madden season, like, 18, and, and you're, like, you know, all the guys are retired. Way too many drops still. Uh, Tucker Craft. I, I like these guys, but it'd be nice to have, like, a Marvin Harrison, an alpha male in that wide receiver room. Or Christian Watson, not to get hurt every three weeks. Or, anyway, or if, or if Devontae was... Adams wouldn't have been like, I want to go play with my college buddy. I, I can't enjoy. I see, everybody, I see all you guys attacking Devontae and, like, I tweeting enjoy it. it. I can't do it. I enjoy I it. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I don't think I think that how did how did him and Rod look, we gotta get off of this? How did him and Rogers uh agree to do the last dance thing and then Devonte got traded and Rogers stayed another year? That made no sense. Why did Rogers why did Rogers ever play without Devonte? Why did what that made no sense? They should have like just traded Devonte. He at least keep Rod, at least keep him the Rogers here. I just wanted to like that's the thing. Like I'm not being the bad guy. This is not this. I just wanted to see those guys stay together because they weren't the reason this team was losing. I just wanted to keep fucking adding to the goddamn football team, and then in ten years I'll be saying the same thing for Jordan Love. You know. Also, like a decade ago, I wanted to trade Aaron Rodgers for fucking Randy Moss because I love Brett Favre. You know. Now I'm a Jordan Love guy, and in a couple of years. You know, I want to trade our backup, uh, Caleb Williams Jr., for, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison III. So I just always want to win. I don't want, I don't ever want to be like the future guy. The future guy is like the fucking Bears. Oh, we got a bunch of cap space. Every year, you know, they're the preseason champs. We got fucking cap space. You know, we got two top 10 picks. And then, you know, you pass on Mahomes and Deshaun Watson at the time. And you take Mitchell Trubisky, who's one of the worst starters in NFL history. So that's the thing. I never want to be – it's like in baseball, man. I never want to be the prospect guy. I never want to be, fuck it, man, can't get can't get rid of Keston Hera for Madison Bumgarner, even though you go to the NLCS and you lose to the Dodgers, you know, and maybe maybe another arm would have helped or another bat. But it's like, nope, can't have fucking Keston Hera, who's 22 years old and tearing up double A. Well, like, counsel, I don't, want, counsel, I don't live fuck in the him. fucking future, Gutekinds. I Here's an all star. Here's sorry. an all star. I'm sorry, Bart Winkler Nation, that hates me, right? That I want to win fucking Super Bowls now. I'm not guaranteed to live in four or five years, you know. So maybe this team 
maybe, you know, uh, they, they win in five, six years, but I want to win right now. So get Jordan Love some help. Get him some good players. Not like, you know, hey, here's this defensive tackle from Iowa that might be good in three or four years, and he might not be. You know, here's Eric Stokes that might be shit, might not be. We still, like, is Stokes good? Is he ever going to play football again? What, why know, didn't Jair travel with the team? Like, Stokes, this team is so I feel like football. these guys haven't played since the Super Bowl. I feel like a lot of these guys, like, thought that they – I love Jair. Like, I think, like, a lot of the slander is crazy, right? And some of the Bakhtiari stuff. Like, you guys don't – Bakhtiari doesn't want to have shot knees before he hits 34 years old. He wants He's to be out a kid there. to run around with. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's like if David Bakhtiari wants to be a Packer, well, you, but it's not going to happen because Goot learned from Ted. And the move is you get rid of offensive linemen a year too early. And actually, it's way too late for Bach anyway. All right, let's get to the picks. Packers. Let me first uh, give a shout out to our friends at Tupelo Honey. There's a cafe downtown uh, Milwaukee. Not more of a restaurant, but Tupelo Honey Cafe is where you can go uh, online and make a reservation. And when you put Bart Winkler show in the reservation notes, you will get, check this out, my friend. So Tupelo Honey, great Southern food. I took Tim Shea there. He had the chicken and waffles. I, like a real Gen Zer, had the avocado toast for breakfast, which was very good. Uh, the grits, very good. Um, the dessert very good so i got dessert and appetizers so here and, and the main you know food so here's what's happened you go there from any time in december you put bart winkler show in the notes 20 percent off your meal if you go there from the 15th friday okay through christmas eve and their brunch you put in that reservation note not only do you get 20 percent off you'll get either a free dessert or appetizer all compliments of our friends at Tupelo Honey for being a proud member of the Winkler verse. Bart Winkler show in the reservation notes or tell your server 20% off. Okay. It's a good deal. What a Thursday night game. I mean, I mean, shit. Al Michaels, you could tell he was pissed that NBC uh kind of yeah, gave him the uh gave him the silent treatment. What's it called? Uh what's it called when you ghosting? They ghosted him. What a great call, though. He's fucking old and crabby, and he stinks. I don't even, you know, like, everybody says that, and then I got to go back and watch because I'm on the air for but these But then games. the Black Friday game, he was, like, super into it, super animated. He just, these games are too late for him. He's 80 years old. Right. Yeah, like, get him, get him up. That's, yeah. And these games also suck. Like, he had to watch Easton Stick take on Aiden O'Connell. So, yeah, I don't blame him. You All got, right, so I, not to be, not to be political. Oh. But you may have two uh, older gentlemen running for president. Everyone's mad about their age. Look, these guys, while they're the president and make decisions, there's a whole cabinet around these people. It's not like it's just them. What I'm saying is Al Michaels is just him. If he doesn't have his fastball, no one's there to pick him up. No one's there to help him out. He needs, he needs to be on point for three and a half hours. I don't think he can do it. Yeah, I also so I'm saying think all the age con, all the age uh, anger towards either candidates should be going to broadcasters instead. I also think he hates. Except for uh, Brent Musburger, should still be calling games. Oh yeah, dude. Did you see the Did you see the promo video for um, the prepackage video for the SEC championship game? It was the last SEC championship game on S on Jesus Lord, the last SEC CBS. championship game on cbs yeah which is hard to believe but he was on there uh do you like the saturday games i'm a big fan of the saturday games this week since we don't have college football we do have college football though we got bowl games which i love ucla on the money line. you, you got to sign up for my bowl pick them at splash oh, sports sure. i gotta do that right now actually twenty dollars make picks i, found I have only i only have 18 fucking people in there for those that um, don't know, splashsports.com backslash Winkler, $20 entry, entry, one one point per game, semifinals, two points, finals, four points. First, Why second, and third get paid out. The more people that enter, the more people you can win. Why are people so scared? Is it because they know you're a sharp after you hit your 16 parlay? Everybody's I don't like, know. Well, if it's, I, th I think I, I, I was asking no. I was asking people on the other day, and I said, Why 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 aren't we into this? Why is it because it's 20 bucks and everyone goes, no, because college fucking sucks. I'm like, I disagree, but. College is better than pro this year. Oh, 
you college sucks. Every game comes down to the wire. You guys are watching Easton stick against Aiden O'Connell. I would argue the NFL sucks. Here's what's great about the NFL sucking. Cause the NFL has been very mid a yeah. lot of like the league's been good. Like even though chargers Raiders were two shitty teams, I looked forward to that all day. I just like the product. Even if the teams are bad, I just like it. But what's happened is all these teams have been so bad every week. I take note of, how many games are there where there's teams with winning records playing each other? And it's so few. But what has happened now is because everyone's so mid, everyone's available for a playoff spot. So suddenly this Saturday slate, you've got seven and six Bengals and seven and six Vikings. We're, we're talking Jake Browning versus Nick, Nate, Nick Mullins. But this is like it's four fun. playoffs. Steelers and Colts, both bad. How on earth are either of these teams seven and six? But they are Broncos. The Broncos are a game out of the Chiefs. So yeah. now you've got three. Saturday's epic, man. Saturday's gonna be great. Yeah, I agree, man. Hey, one hot one, what not uh, one take I wanted to throw out there. Like Major League Baseball fucking sucks. And I'm why do so we done with it? Why do we even care? Right? Like I'm a Cub fan. You're a Brewer fan. And like you know, we, we, during the season, we all hate each other. And, you know, we hate the Cardinals. Why do any of us even bother? Because at the end of the day, the fucking Dodgers are going to flex their nuts and throw $700 million at Otani. And the Yankees are going to trade for Juan Soto. And we're going to be left cheering for some fucking 350-pound guy that looks like he should be playing beer league softball because he has a hot July where he hits eight homers, you know, and, and fight for a wild card spot. So, like, why do we even bother? I'm not this year. I want to take the entire summer off and, 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 uh, you know, I don't know. Just I did that on once. I took the Brewers in 2015. We're going to be bad. Or it might've yeah. been 16. So I took a summer off. I just didn't care about baseball. It was, it was unbelievable. It was the greatest the, summer of my life. The Cubs fucking paid Craig council all that money. And he's going to end up managing a shitty team. than they put on the field opening day last year. How do you not, how do you not just say like, we're a fucking big market team. We got a sports book. Here's 800 million. No, nobody cares about the Cubs, I get, but baseball is just so stupid. It's the same fucking shit every year. Anyway, uh, Saturday is going to be epic. And I actually have some bets on Saturday. So let's let's get to them. Here's my favorite bet. Let's start with the early game on Saturday, 1 p.m. my time, which means noon p.m. your time. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings opened as five point dogs in this game. I bet them actually at four. Now they're down to three as we record this podcast. So I liked Minnesota anything over a field goal. I guess I still like them at three. They might win this game outright. They've benched Dobbs, but like I was talking about, Brian Flores has done God's work. They have a top 10 defense. Last year they were terrible. Uh, Cincinnati, they're winning games. I actually like what they're doing with Jake Browning. He's playing a little bit more under center. Told you about Chase Brown last week scored a touchdown. That was plus 800. I would bet him again this week. Joe Mixon's running the ball a little bit better. Uh, Browning looks good because, and I'm not saying like Joe Burrow system quarterback, but I mean, you do have Jamar Chase, T Higgins. Yeah. Uh, Browning might be good. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like they were talking about this last week or two weeks ago in the broadcast, they're like, you know, he works with these quarterback gurus every year in the off season, hasn't given up on the dream. And right now he's playing within the offense. And I always like the crap on Zach Taylor. He's actually been pretty good. But still, man, now we're like we're pricing them as four point favorites down to three. I, I like Minnesota in this game. I think they might win, unfortunately. Would love to see them lose. Uh, but for my uh for my wall, if they do have to lose, would love to see it by be by like two points. So I like the Vikings here. I'm taking the Bengals. I'm totally believing in Jake Browning. You're believing I like, I like believe watch Brock Purdy for a year and a half, and I'm still like, mm, I'm not sure. And then I see like nine highlights of Jake Browning, and I'm like Joe Burrow, who? Yeah. 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 All right. I like the pick. Um, I, like I was, going, I, I just, yeah. I mean, like at three, I don't like it as much, but I love Minnesota at four. I think this is a field goal game. I think it'll be a closer game. All Minnesota's games are close. They're, they're always one score games. So you will have but, Chris Rose on the broadcast call, by the way. Oh, Chris formerly from Rose. Of, formerly of the best damn sports show, period. Oh, and it was a great show. It was a great show. Yeah. I watch it every night. John the Spider Sally. Uh, Tom Arnold. Oh, <laughs> Tom Arnold. He was on the show. I know. It was great. What a cast, man. It was 
it was wild some of the stuff that they would do too man wasn't like D- D'Amico far or some shit on that show yeah they, they like they had like a rotating cast i believe towards the end because i stopped watching there were some people that got their legitimate start on that show yeah yeah uh, Jim- Carissa Thompson was on that show. Rodney Pete, Lisa Guerrero, Michael Irvin, Stephen A. Smith was on that show. Yeah. Wow. Show is awesome. We need, that's what we need. There needs to be like another, like a new one of those. Mm-hmm. Problem is like Barstool, like already just like, you know, yeah, fucking takes everything. And it's like, you gotta be fucking stooly. Uh, anyway, um, I actually liked the Colts, but now you TJ Watt's shirt. No, it's oh. just a regular ass white sweatshirt. I'm going to. I got. I got to go to the gym and physical therapy still. I hate Thursdays. I have like 18 radio hits, and then I do Can a. Uh, do this, yeah. No, this is my favorite part of the day. This I volunteer to do. I've tried to get out of the radio hits. They're in my contract for one more year. If I sign another contract, zero percent chance. I'm, I almost said. I almost said something I, I would regret. I love to I love to drop a little Easter eggs though. It's fun. Colts are one and a half point favorites against the Steelers. TJ Watt's going to play, even though he's got scrambled eggs for brains right now. I kind of like the Steelers somehow in this game. But man, it's one and a half is the spread right now. Um give me Pittsburgh here. Like, you know, the Colts are playing pretty good football, but now, right now, everybody in Pittsburgh is calling for Mike Tomlin's head. Which Why? I think it's – thank you. I think they just maybe think it's like like with McCarthy. Fans like we're fansky. Browns fans wants the fansky gone. That's insane. He's been – he's worked with fucking DTR, uh, PJ Walker, and now – anything, these, and, and, and Steelers fans booing Trubisky, like, fuck you. He's your backup quarterback. He is terrible, though. We don't boo the backup. Only because I have the terrible towel prop, I will take Steelers with you. Yeah. I mean, this just seems like, dude, people are, like, calling for Mike Tomlin's head, and he wins this game outright. All right. Uh, and then we got one more Saturday this game. This might be in my entire house, this terrible towel. The thing, the like, the drunkest purchase I've made. Really? Like, I don't, like, I've, you know, I don't think I've ever made any th- purchase other than more alcohol, more drunk than this towel. More alcohol? Because mere moments after I bought this, I took a third quarter nap. Yeah. 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 Um, Saturday night, Winks. Big game. This is the one that I'm, I'm waiting for here. We got... Uh, this is going to be a good one. We got the Detroit Lions, now 9-4, and four, coming off a couple losses. People are out on the Lions. I bet against them the last couple weeks. Coming in, the Denver Broncos, who are on a tear, now a game above 500, 7-6. Sean Payton turning that ship around. Russ Wilson looking like Russ. The defense playing much better ever since they got teabagged by the Miami Dolphins and let them hang 70. The Broncos. Four-point dogs in this game. The Lions, four-point favorites. A touch over a field goal here. My co-hosts, Nick and Trista, buying into the Denver Broncos. Both of them put the Denver Broncos into their power rankings. I did not this week. But I get the love for the Denver Broncos. I'm taking the Detroit Lions, and I bet $2,000 on the Detroit Lions. And let me Shut tell you why. I faded them the last two weeks because that was road golf, right? Road golf. Yeah, Windy road conditions, golf. playing in that shitty field, soldier field. Uh, I don't like golf on the road. You know where I like golf, though, baby? At home, in that dome, with that run game, and those weapons, and big dick Ben Johnson calling the plays. Russ Wilson's going to throw not one, not two, not three. But four interceptions in this game. Aiden Hutchinson, two sacks, one interception, three tackles for a loss, one scoop and score. Lions are my. If they don't win, I got to go and sniff some glue. Pick of the week, baby. Give me the Lions minus four. Give me the Lions alternate line minus seven. 
Give me the Lions minus 14. It's going to be a route, Bart. You might even turn the game off. You might you might be so bored, you might watch that shit they call AEW in that high school gym. I saw a video of Alberto Del Rio walking in a high school gym with like <laughs> 18 people. I saw that too. What a dog shit person he is. Fuck him. He should be in prison. I'm glad instead he's at Plainfield High School. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Lions. I watched uh I watched AEW this week because I was <clears throat> after the Bucks Pacers game where they tried to steal Giannis's game ball from him, those bastards. Oh, I gotta talk about that too. Um I had AEW on while I was posting the show, and I haven't watched it in like two months, and there was this promo exchange between Big Bill and Ricky Starks and Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho are teammates now. And it was awful. It was like you couldn't even tell that these guys had ever been in a ring together before, like yeah. at all before. You went to they were like Al Michaeling up there. It was brutal. God bless Jericho. He's the, he's one of the goats, right? And With apologies to Paul. Yeah. Right now, though, he looks like fucking hell out there, too. Um, I like the Lions with you. I think them coming indoors is huge. Um, the Broncos, I, I I keep picking wrong. I I didn't believe in them, so I kept picking against them. Then they won, and I picked I picked them to win, and then they lost to Houston. And then I you know I don't know. I do find it interesting. They're just a game back of the Chiefs, though. That's kind of crept out of nowhere. But uh, I think the Lions are going to put a lot of like questions aside. I still think they're the Lions that we think they are. They're not the Niners. They're not the Cowboys. Maybe not the Eagles. But they're still the fourth best team in the NFC, and they'll show that. I like that. All right. Go Lions. We got a show bet. All right. Let's head over to uh, Sunday. We got three games only on Saturday. Yeah, three on Saturday, the bullshit we had on Thursday. So now Sunday, let's start with another game, I bet. Noon kickoff. The Chicago Bears opened at three and a half. They're down to three. They're taking a little bit of money. Going against the Cleveland Browns and Joe Flacco, who is elite, could still make all the throws. But like I said, Bears defense all of a sudden playing like a top 10, top 5 unit with Eberflus and Justin Fields playing for his job. Uh, I actually like the Bears with the points here. Give me the Bears. I think the Bears are going to play some decent football down the stretch. And if you're a Bears fan, what's kind of cool is you don't really have to worry about like winning some meaningless games. Who knows? I mean, they're not even dead in the NFC somehow. But you don't have to worry about winning these meaningless games because you have the number one overall pick no matter what because the Carolina – So what if Justin Fields takes him to the playoffs? You're just moving on from him? Maybe they draft Marvin Harrison to get him more help. So they're going to pass on that number one pick too. Or do – what I would do if I'm uh, Ryan Poles – hard to keep up these days, not Ryan Pace. Ryan Poles, I would trade back the number one pick. Caleb Williams, like, I don't – I like Caleb Williams. I don't see Mahomes. I like Drake May. I really like Jaden Daniels. So, I mean, if the Bears are sold on fields, then I would trade back because you're already going to have two top 10 picks, right? So, man, now how many picks could you stockpile? You have all that money in cap space. You're building a top 10 defense. Probably, I don't know. Like, I like Justin Fields, but he fumbles the – I, w- I would have to take one of the quarterbacks, even if he took me to the playoffs. Yeah, it's really tough, and it's tough for Fields because it's like – I take May. It's like no matter how good Fields plays, he can't save his job. I take the classic pocket quarterback that is a little athletic, could make the throws. I know we struck out with the last North Carolina guy. Hey, you know, or I take Caleb. Uh, fuck, I don't know. We still got a couple months to evaluate, and – you know, we got we got to see who who fucking tests. You know, C.J. Stroud. We can't forget that he. he <laughs> <laughs> we got to uh, measure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Browns. I I really was impressed by Joe Flacco. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Browns. I love it, dude. I love it. I hate it actually because I bet against you. Here is one where uh, it seems obvious. Like Atlanta's bad because of Desmond Ritter. Um, they're six and seven. They should be much better. The defense is much better this season. They're three-point favorites over the Panthers. I'm sure the Panthers probably would bang me if I actually bet Atlanta. If I had to bet this game, I'm staying away. I don't want anything to do with this. I would bet Atlanta. I need Atlanta to win eight games this season, or I lose like 500 bucks. I want to so. bet. I like. I want to take the Panthers as one of these teams to upset them, but 
and while I'm not writing and closing the book on him at all, Bryce Young does not look good. Uh, he's missing open receivers, but the team looks awful too. Yeah. Their, their team and the Patriots were two teams that, from a fantasy football perspective, if you looked at their skill positions, it's like, oh, these are just a bunch of guys that everybody offers in trades and then cuts them when nobody accepts them. You got Zeke, who might have a big week. Zeke, Juju, uh, who else does New England have? Devontae Parker, Hunter Henry, all these random-ass dudes. Carolina was Adam Thielen and uh, Miles Sanders, and it's like, who the fuck? Why? They, Miles Sanders came and win the job. I, I know you know that he backed up Saquon Barkley. He did at Penn State. I know you know that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, as, as bad as the Falcons are, they, they play the Panthers. I, I'm going to give the Falcons the win. Yeah, I think you have to, dude. And it's only a three-point spread, so even if they win by a field goal, we would get the push. I might end up having a bet at Wada in this game. I hate myself for it. Here's another one I hate myself for. Uh, give me the Jets, plus nine and a half against the Dolphins. Give me the Jets on the money line. I think the Jets beat the Dolphins. The uh, ESPN line that I have up, it's, our, it's down to eight. Really? Yeah. Hold on. As we do this. Um, so, I mean, the case I'll make is – you, you got to beat up Dolphins offense right now, right? So if it's going down, you better get that pick in. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm betting it right now pretty big. Because they lost their starting center for the year. He was grading out the best center in all of football. Tyreek got dinged in that last game. I know he came back in. And then the defensive side of the ball is a fucking nightmare right now with injuries. They lost Jalen Phillips, who I bet to win defensive player of the year before the season. And Zach Wilson's player of the week. Zach Wilson and uh, our guy, uh, who was the other one? Was it DeVito? Some yeah. other squad. He was player of the week for a hundred and something passing yards. Fuck. Out. 71 rushing yards. I, I know, but like Lamar does one that. Best, like, one of the best touchdowns of the year. Lamar does that. He's got to, and people yell, he's got to stay in the pocket more. Tommy DeVito does. What a world we live in. Tommy DeVito does it. And, you know, because <laughs> he lives with his parents, you know, yeah. and, you know, but Lamar does it. And he's like, stay in the pocket. Fuck this world that we live in. I'm just kidding. FTW. <laughs> I agree. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Jesus. Eight and a half. So it went I'm down for you? Ooh, I usually don't do this. Sound like R. Kelly. Give me i I'm going to buy the 10 minus 130 on my uh, offshore book right now. So, yeah, I'm going to bet the Jets. I'm also going to bet the money line. What's the money line right now? I am gonna... well, While you do this, I want to tell you about something that's onshore, and that is it's in Muskego. That's why. It's Happy Place Hemp. HappyPlaceHemp.com. The promo code is BART. 25% off every order at happyplacehemp.com. Whether you go there for the first time or the ninth time or the 15th time or the 3,000th time, you will get that code, Happy Place Hemp. The promo code is BART. It's 25% off again every time that you use the order with my code. You can get the lip balms, the tinctures, the gummies, the CBD, the THC, the Delta 8s, the Delta 9s, the CBNs, whatever you need. There's different things. I People rub the little ointment on their wrist and all of a sudden the wrist pain has gone away or your knee or some ligaments you need to sleep gummy you want to enjoy some of this shitty football gummy it's all there for you happyplacehemp.com promo code bart what's your bet all right so i bet uh jets plus uh 10 minus 130 but i also just bet a hundred dollars on the jets to win the game plus 350 no sorry hold on let me get the right price for the people. Right now, Jets rotation number 319 plus 329. So I'm going to bet them to win. I think the Jets are going to win the game. Doesn't that be higher? The Jets? Like, I feel a 10 point line should be more than plus 320. Let me uh, see what it is at BetMGM really quick. Maybe I don't figure out that part of. Sometimes I'm always like, oh, I'm going to take this underdog. And then it's like, Oh shit! It's not really an underdog. Um, right I now, paid out the way I thought I was. So right now, over at BetMG, I think the Jets win this game, dude. Hopefully they they don't throw a hail mary that gets picked off for six. Um, I th I think that they're gonna find a way to do it. They are right now at BetMGM. God, this is taking forever. Yeah, plus 335, so that's the best price I could get. All right, let's move on to the next game. If the Jets – that's my underdog pick of the week, though. The Jets. Right. What could go wrong? Lose by 50. All right. Uh, 
Man, my internet stinks today. All right, let's stick on Sunday. We got to wait for the Packers game, though. And let's go to Tennessee, where Will Levis and the Titans. This game is absolute bullshit. I wondered if they would do this, and I can't believe they are. They are wearing the throwback Euler uniforms against Houston. Yep, and they're going to win. The Titans There's no are fucking win. way they don't win. The Titans are winning this game against There's the no Texas. way. It's Titan two and a half. Theory, Titans theory is out the window. This is Oilers theory. When you wear the Oilers uniforms against Houston, you fucking win that game by a lot of points. Should we bet? Should I bet this one too big? It's minus 145 on the money line. They're they're out to three right now, man. A five and eight team. And CJ Stroud, he's got scrambled egg brains right now. He's in the uh, protocol, even, even if he does play. Yeah, I'm going to bet the I hear the blues are calling a salad and scrambled eggs. Yeah, I'm going to bet the Titans here. I don't need it no, anymore. Like, the comeback was great. That was great. But the jerseys. I mean, they, the, the, the gall. The gall, Ryan. The gall to wear those jerseys. Will Levis is feeling himself now. He got to flex his muscles literally on Monday Night Football. Uh, yeah, I'm going to – Titans, 500 bucks on the Titans. And uh, $100 on the uh, Dolphins. I'm sorry, the Jets to cover against the Dol uh, Dolphins. And then 100 on the money line. And uh, that's Yeah, that's we're we spending some money today on the show. I like it. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when we do these on a Thursday and college football season's over. And we got a little money to play with. Because Jaden Daniels brought home the Heisman. 20 to 1. 18 to 1. 12 to 1. Nine to one. I just kept betting it and betting it and betting it and telling everybody to bet it. It's before the Alabama game, I said bet it and then bet Alabama fourteen to one to win the national title. Two great bets. Now you can hedge if you want. All right, uh, let's get back to Sunday and let's scroll down and let's go. Oh God, New England's down to eight right now. Uh, do the Chiefs bounce back here? I think the Chiefs win. I don't know that they win by eight points. I kind of like the Patriots plus eight actually. I would take the Chiefs to cover. I don't really have a strong feeling on this game. Me neither, but they're all bitchy, bitchy. And then normally what I've realized in life is the more you bitch, the more things somehow seem to work out for you. Yeah. Especially the louder you bitch. I'm on the bigger stage. So uh, I think they'll get, I think they'll bitch their way to a win. So like the refs are going to be like extra cautious. Like we don't want Mahomes mad at us. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. San Francisco's a 12 and a half point favorite on the road against the Cardinals. Niners are pass. I would not want to bet against the Niners with the Cardinals. No way. No, Kyler Murray sucks, but he's going to be the quarterback there for another 10 years and probably win a total of 10 games. Most I likely. think the Niners with you. Most likely. Red could go as high as 16 and a half before I would yeah. think about it. I also like the Rams as six and a half point favorites against the Tobies. Like, I like this Rams team, man. Puka's fun. I like Stafford defense. McVay's been pretty good this year. They're six and seven. They're fighting for the playoffs. Commandos are fighting for the best playoff spot. They, these people in DC, like they're going crazy about what team's even going to be in DC. It's a big shit show. So I'll actually take another favorite. Give me the Rams. Everybody in the fantasy circles are tripping over themselves in the playoffs if they have one Matthew Stafford against this Washington defense. Uh, the Rams are a heavy favorite in terms of that. A lot of people like uh, Stafford this weekend. I'll probably be doing some DFS there, uh, and I agree with you. I like – now I'm looking the guy – I traded Stafford to a guy in the league, and he's going to start fields over Stafford. I hope he changes that. You can't start fields against Cleveland over Stafford against the commanders, can you? I wouldn't. Commandos have one of the worst pass defenses in the league. They might have Toby out there on Sunday. What does my website say to do? Uh, they've got Fields as eight, Stafford as seven. So, okay. Maybe uh, love, it, love is nine, by the way. Jordan Love, ninth best quarterback. Jordan Love, they say start him at, over Howell, Russell, Tua, Goff, Lawrence, Murray, Baker, Browning. Not bad. Jared Not Goff. bad at all. Not Jordan. bad at all. But I like you. I like uh, the Rams. And I like the Rams. Like you and I like you. Ram it. All right. Jags. Wait. Bills. Two-point favorites against the Cowboys. I bet the Bills here at home. What? Yeah, they need this one, man. And I bet the over. I'm stunned they're favorites. Stunned. Two-point favorites at home. 
I like the over. I am stunned. I thought the Cowboys would be a like a three point favorite. I think it's going to be a shootout. I bet the over at 49, it's out to 50 and a half. That's my favorite bet. I also bet the Bills in this game. I think the Bills win this one. I think I think the Bills are about to go on a run. So Cowboys have been playing great football. Cowboys are great at home. They struggle a little bit on the road. So give me the Bills here in a desperation spot. I would pick a, any any other way if it wasn't my Cowboys. I'm going to take my Cowboys to cover. Ooh. All right, let's go to Sunday night. Jags, Trevor Lawrence out there on one leg, three-point dogs against the Ravens. I feel like I'm taking a lot of favorites here, man, but I just think this is a shit matchup for the Jags because you got Trevor Lawrence banged up. You got your third-string left tackle out there. Now you don't have Christian Kirk. Baltimore with their D.C. McDonald's probably going to play a bunch of man's man defense. He's your man beater. Kelvin Ridley's kind of stunk this year. And the Jags' defense is shit. They just gave up 400 yards last time we saw him against uh, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and Jake Browning. So I'll go Ravens here, minus three. Yeah, Jacksonville is the worst, best team in the league. And they're going to get throttled by the Ravens. I like a yeah. big day for Lamar. Same here. Oh, I forgot about one noon kickoff. I like uh, the Giants to cover six against the Saints. I don't think the Saints should be six-point favorites over anybody. So give me Tommy DeVito. I said I'd never pick the Saints again after they fucked me in Survivor, but then the Giants made me mad, so I'm going to take the Saints there. Uh, the Tommy DeVito thing, it's very clear that everyone knows this is going to go away as a story, so they're cramming all their stories into one week, like, Let's get that agent. I was just born out of the womb with a fedora. <laughs> shoot, 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 bang, bang, bang. I mean, wow, yeah. how many stereotypes can we fucking have here? Did you know that he was, uh, that he lives with his parents? Tommy DeVito? Yeah. Yeah, right in the shadow of the stadium. Did you know that? I <laughs> pray that it comes out that they're doing a whole Watley thing here, like from Seinfeld, where oh. they, they, they converted to Italian for the jokes. Yeah, I got to take, unless somebody's w living in like a Winnebago outside the stadium, like fucking Rod Beck was doing back in the 90s, pounding beers with fans after the games. I don't care where anybody lives. You yourself slept in the car outside the station just to get a chance. Tommy Maybe DeVito every right. night is going home to Linguini and fucking Prosetto and Prosetto yeah. and Prosquito. Yeah, did yeah, you see that no. spread they had, dude? Like, Italian, I would, remember. I would I would never leave home. The only reason I left home is because I had to. Anyway, uh, let's do the Monday night game real quick because the Seahawks are four point dogs against the Eagles. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna take Seattle plus four, even if it's Drew Locke, man. The Eagles are not good, and that's my breakdown. And it's in Seattle, tough place to play. Oh, give me the Eagles. They need a win in the worst way. They've had a real tough schedule. They're going through it. They're kind of doing like a playoff test early. They're gonna bounce back against Seattle mainly because. In my guillotine league, I have Hertz, A.J. Brown, and Goddard, and I need them to win, so I'm going to root nope. for what I need. Everybody's going to take the Eagles thinking the same thing. They might win, but they'll win by a field goal, not four points. Give me Seattle. Let me tell you All something right. about this uh, Packers game, Horvat. Three-and-a-half-point favorites at Lambeau. Now, the, the Packers, if you think Packers-Buccaneers at Lambeau, I think you think instantly about the NFC Championship game. Right? Yeah. We lost, but... I'll tell you this, dating back to 1990, in regular season games, the Packers are 14-1 and one against Tampa. Mm -hmm. Now, 12 of the 15 contests have been decided by single digits. But the Packers are 14-1 and one against Tampa in the last 23 years. So I like the Packers. And I, what is it, three and a half? It is... Three and a half right now, which I'm going to take the buck at three and a half. Oh, I would probably take the, the six and a half. Would you? I like the Packers. I like the Bucks here. Uh, you think they'll win? You think they're going to beat our, our Greeny Bays? Mm, I don't. I think Green Bay wins. I don't think they win by four points, though. Well, I mean, history might be on your side. I, I just mentioned the stat. History is on your side. What's the injury report look like? Is uh, Christian Watson going to be out there or Aaron Jones? You know, I mean. I don't even look. I mean, I don't even feel like these guys are on the team. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. I got a bad feeling about this one. That's why I thought that they really needed that one against the Giants. Like the Bucks are. You know also what? Stad didn't get enough points. attention, Horvat. What Stad didn't get enough attention was that was the first December loss for Matt Lafleur on Monday. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I know. Now we'll be hear like... about that stat ever again. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like Baker and and the Bucks are going to keep this game close. How has Baker Mayfield done against Green Bay? Uh, not well. Remember, there was the Christmas Day game on on uh, when he was in Cleveland, and he was playing with a uh, with a with a shoulder, like a, a hurt shoulder. Yes, only twice. Uh, only twice Baker has faced the Packers. Your Christmas Day game, he was twenty one of thirty six with two touchdowns and four interceptions. Was sacked yeah. five times. Yeah, then he's got a pass here uh, with the Rams. With the Rams, was that a Monday night game? Monday night, yeah. 12 of 21, 111 yards. So Baker, two times in Green Bay, has averaged 166 and a half, a touchdown and a half a game, two and a half picks a game. He's been sacked five times a game. Uh, I like the Packers. I, you know what? You know what I like here? I like the Packers to flat out murder the yeah. Buccaneers. Yeah, you know what? I'm Baker Mayfield, the passer rating of 55.7, <laughs> 333 yards, three touchdowns, five picks in two games against Green Bay. This is going to be a flat out Joe Barry masterclass. It might save his job. Hey, if you're looking for your job to be saved, let Baker Mayfield come to town and then play the Panthers the next week. Oh God, I forgot about that game, dude. The Panthers are so bad. As long as they don't lose that game, then I'm then I'm, then I'm fine with yeah, it. Yeah, uh, Wisconsin Wisconsin sports fans are a little apprehensive because you got the shitty Panthers coming up, and then for the Bucks. They have the pace, not the Pacers. They have the Pistons this weekend who have lost 20 some in a row. And they have the Spurs next week who have lost 18 in a row. Covered for me last night against the Lakers, though. So that was a big one. Oh, yeah. Wow. Without yeah. LeBron. Did you make yeah. that post, LeBron? Yep. Yep. Not bro. Not bro. Um, yeah. So also, big bowl game. Give me UCLA on the money line. I bet them at two. They're all the way out to four. Bowl season, it's finally here. Not really any great games this weekend, but uh oh also give me the Badgers, ten and a half against LSU. What do you like for the Florida State game? I don't think they should play. Yeah, I don't either. If they do, though, I'm gonna take Florida State with the points. If they win or if they lose, everyone's like told you so. If they win, people are gonna be like, Well, Georgia didn't care. And then they're also gonna be like, What are they gonna do? Split national chain? They get fucked. You see Kirk Herbstreet's tweet the other night? Yeah. Like he had a he had like a Bible verse, yeah, about this. Like we, bro, you're in the tank for the SEC. Just admit it. Yeah, I know. The, 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 the stronger yeah. you deny it, the more, the more, the you, more you look guilty. Yeah, the guiltier you look, you should say. All right, man. Have a good day. Good luck with your picks this week. Good luck with your uh, fantasy. Good luck with your uh, with your ventures. Uh, yes. Good luck with your ventures. Go Bucks. Uh, good luck with your bets that you have made on the show and elsewhere. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, Ryan hopefully Horvath. Well. Ryan Horvath, ladies and gentlemen. All right, if you're on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream, now you see just a giant Omaha Steaks hot dog because I paused the recording when I was done with Horvath. It makes the editing easier. But also, um, well, I mean, get some Omaha Steaks for... I know I did. Promo code BART. You get you type in Bart Wingler at the top. It takes you to a deal. Then if you go, if you're spending at least 149, you can promo code it Bart. It's real. What I so what I did was they're gonna if you're gonna get charged for shipping, just put some more food in there, and then use the promo code. And essentially, you would have paid like 20 bucks for shipping, and now you're getting food instead. A little backdoor way. So now let's go just to me, and there I am, and I got some. Voicemails from Carl's Place. Carl's Place, Carl of ET.com, backslash Bart. Let's check out the voicemails that I do have. I know I have at least three of them. Uh, this one continues the discussion with the Bucks. This is from Landmark. As you know, the Bucks. Fuck. Um, I don't know if you guys caught my show on Thursday, but one of the things I was talking about on CBS was do people outside of Milwaukee like Giannis? And I don't know. I don't know that this the, this altercation 
let more people like him? Do they think he's a B? Giannis said he wanted the ball for Dame. He doesn't even think he's got the real ball. What a crazy story. This time last year, we were all talking about that ladder. Remember that? Now it's this ball. Funny stuff. The NBA. Gotta love it. They play again Jan 1 and Jan 3. So Jan 1, I don't like that they play Jan 1. I want to watch college football, man. But then they play Jan 3. All right, here is Landmark. Good morning, Bart. This is Landmark. I figured I'd give you a call. I have a few topics to discuss with you today. First, what was going on with the Pacers trying to gaslight the bus with this whole ball situation? They were the road team. They had no right to go and be like, hey, we're just going to take this ball for some dude who got his first points. Like, and then for Carlisle to come into that conference with his big, like, very calm interview, like, well, they didn't have to do that. Like, that, that was just trash. So that's all I got to say about that. Second thing, yes, festival is expensive. But I think all grocery stores are expensive because at, you know, Metro Market or Pick and Save or whatever you want to call it, you can get chicken breast for a good price, then you're going to pay like $10 for grapes. So every store has their things that are cheap and their things that are expensive. That's how they get you. Third thing, Packers are showing some stuff, but we got to see how the rest of the season plays out. I mean, it's good to see that some of these players are showing flashes, but I always like to take the long game approach. And then my final topic for you today, Bart, is as your boots on the ground correspondent for the Milwaukee Wave, their season has begun. It's been a little bit of an interesting start. They've had two overtime games, won one of them, lost one of them, lost their other game, but they're a very young team this year. So we'll see if that team grows together, gels together, and much like the Packers, maybe makes a run towards the end of their season. So that's what I got for you, Bart. Hope that you are doing well. Um, you know, think about that gym membership. Don't think about what people be doing in the bathrooms because don't nobody want to think about that because the only thing that I know about gym bathrooms is there's too many people who just be sitting bare butt cheeks on those benches. And I don't need to see it. I don't need to think about it. I spent too much time in the gym bathroom just trying to get in and out because I had a workout to do. But there's some people who they want to show all of their business to everybody else. And I don't need that. Anyway, talk to y'all later. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah, at least you're looking at where my my gym it feels so weird to say. Just three, you know, three little bathrooms. There's not like the YMC situation where, you know, old people are like trying to see who's more wrinkly than the other person. Um. Jake was wondering if I'd play his voicemail. I absolutely will. This was before the Bucks game. I don't think there's anything. This is more of a reaction to the mm -hmm, mm -mm this week. And again, it's a Carl's Place voicemail. Carl of ET.com backslash Bart. Carl of ET.com backslash Bart. Hello, Winklivers. Your boy, Hot huh? Take Take here. Let me talk to you. First things first, I'm hurting for certain. Um, if you have to get, and eventually you probably will, your, do not let your dentist convince you that you don't need to go under. They were working on me like a 1977 freaking Pontiac, just in the teeth. Me. Just, um, under Jake. So I'm hurting. I'm recovering. That sucks. Speaking of things that suck, down to this week's power rankings for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to just say that all three of you finished dead last for carrying Matt LaFleur's walk. Um, that was maybe the worst call game, certainly, of this season when you combine it with Jordan Love playing, you know, week three version of Jordan Love. Oh, yeah, yeah, what a disaster. Speaking of disasters, the NBA and Draymond Green. How many uh, games is it going to be this time? Is the slap on the wrist going to be? A little bit of a red mark or you know is Voldemort the commissioner himself again just going to turn the other way I like the idea of uh, someone on Twitter said the NBA should suspend Steve Kerr uh, if the suspension for Draymond aren't working go after the guy who's his number one defender slash number one enabler the guy's a clown at this point I feel like Maybe he just doesn't want to play. He wants a vacation. And he's like, NBA, what do I have to do? Do I literally need to OJ somebody? What is it going to take? Jesus. Okay, on to the power rankings. Dead last this week, Grant. Genesis, 
Bill Collins, come on, dude. I like survive going, but it's okay to like fun music. On the second place part, kind of a similar grade for you, buddy. I'm not going to rip because I want to, but you sit down at concerts. What, do you, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Paul, no notes. You were perfect. Love you guys. Yeah, not only that, I sit down to pee. I think when you get to a certain age, you sit down to pee. I think that's 33 and a half. That's what I decided. So I'd like to hear from you guys if you're older or younger than that. Why stand up if you can sit down? I use that theory in every other aspect of my life. Why would I not continue it? Uh, Man in the Falls. Hey, Bart, it's me. Um, Elf is fucking garbage, and it's New Orleans, even though the French city is Orléans. All right. Um, Always dynamic from those three. Thank you. That is the show today. We will be live after Packers Buccaneers. That will be on Sunday. Uh, And then probably wondering Bucks Rockets or after maybe a shorty. Uh, We'll see what happens. If these guys fight over a game ball again, we could go a little longer. That was kind of pandemonium. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Um, We'll see. But a new rivalry is brewed thanks to the in-season tournament. I do really like the Packers over the Bucks, so I hope that that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Thank you, and this is the end of the episode, and we will be back next week here on the Bart Winkler Radio Network.